Right, so here we go. The cheapest air source heat pump I could find. 300 quid, brand new delivered. Let's get it open and have a look. Welcome back to Autokoi. Just giving these guys their end of winter, start of the season feed. I'm trying to bring the filters up. And today we are going to be looking at a Essel's heat pump, which I have found for £300. Yes, £300. It is a small unit designed for heat hot tubs and swimming pools. <coughs> Very similar to <coughs> the second hand one that I picked up last year. Um, but this one is brand new. I just want to put it out there. This is the start of some of the bits and pieces I'm putting in for my next project. Um, but I'm going to go through an unboxing and just show you some of the efficiency on it. What I think people need to keep in mind and pay particular attention to with this, if you are using a fish tank heater that is around 500 watts or slightly more, then you really need to think about the initial outlay for one of these air sources versus that fish tank heater because of the energy efficiency that you'll get out of it. But you'll see that when we go through it. So let me chuck some food in the other end. having a quick morning check and then we'll get straight into the unboxing everyone looking cracking right let's get on there you go the branding So there's the, the manual for you. So that's the, the brand, the rebrand. I just said I'm pretty sure it's a Thermatec one. I, I can't back that up or anything, just from what the design looks like, but obviously we'll, I'll see if I can work it out. Uh, the important bits though. So this is quite key when you're looking at air source heat pumps. It's to do with the cop rating, obviously with the power you put in and the power, the, the heat equivalent that you get out. This changes given your air temperature and given the water temperature that you're heating. So for me probably realistically most of the year going to have an ambient temperature around 15 mark when it's bad in the summer and when we're in the autumn and spring water suit temperature bang on where i want it you put in 0.73 kilowatts you'll get out two kilowatts worth of heat so there's your efficiency 3.1 it gives you height of the summer 27 days obviously being in the tunnel i'm going to be putting in 0.7 kilowatts getting out three we'll get above the 32 mark 0.8 getting up four so you can see whether and obviously there's the water up there at a temperature of 30, uh, 22 as well down so it's a cooler water temperature so that that's where you're going to be looking at your your constant efficiency what you're trying to get out of them so uh minus seven to 43 i'm actually surprised by this because i'm pretty sure i need to go back and double check i'm pretty sure the advert told me it was a one that we're only going out to seven not minus seven so that's really good. It's got an auto defrost cycle on it as well. So for 300 quid, absolutely banging. Obviously, your capacity is going to be your key here. I'm going to be putting this on about a 5,000 litre system, which is pretty much perfect. So let's get on. We're getting the rest of it out. Right. So you've got your condensing pipe. So for any condensation to collect underneath or on the side, I'll assume it's the underneath. And we've got our bag of fittings what we got in here we've got some ptfe we've got some jubilee hose clips we've got our fittings for the front and what i'm going to assume at this point are feet of some sort so coming with everything we need these are going to be handy that looks like 32 mil to me but yeah that's nice and handy right let me get the rest of it out of the box now. right i've lifted it out that was surprisingly heavy um but as you can see, there's the unit. I'll put my uh, tape stack back on there. But again, plug, little RCD on it, already plugged as well. Yeah, what a cracking, cracking little unit. Inlets and outlets, I've pulled one of the plugs out back since I pulled it out of the box. As you can see, it's information on the side. So again, the, the heating capacity of it, the rating, it, it does do it as best cop rating obviously the book will tell you the other the other ones that you've got in there so always bear that in mind when you're looking at the labels as well on the side of them but i'm very very happy so far 
So let's hope we'll see if it works as well as I think it's going to. Um, perfect for monies, like I said, because of the capacity. Um, yeah, outdoor living. I'll stick the link so you can see that. But obviously the price will probably won't be held for long. Right, so what we're going to look at quickly here is is the efficiency of the air source heat pump versus that aquarium heater I mentioned at the start. So I'm going to compare it to the 500 watt Heiger heater that I used last year um, versus obviously the, the figures that you've just seen that this heat pump produces. So looking at, and I'm, going to, I'm not taking the top efficiency here because no one's going to be using it in 32 degree ambient air temperature um, and very few of us are going to get to have sustained periods of 27. So I'm going to start with the 15 degree air temperature and the 26 degree water temperature being the, the water that you're running through and keeping heated. So let's just understand obviously a 24 hour period, if both heaters were on all of the time, we're not gonna factor any of that, that's obviously all individual use cases, but just to make a direct comparison. So if you have the aquarium heater on for 24 hours, it produces 12 kilowatts of heat energy and it uses 12 kilowatts of heat energy. Yes, there is probably a, a small a minus in terms of efficiency loss in the transfer, etc., because it's never a direct 500 in, gets you 500 out. But that is it in theory, that's how they're advertised, that's how they work, without getting all scientific and technical on it. So the heat pump produces in that same 24 hour period at the 15 degree air temperature, 48 kilowatts of heat energy and it uses 17.52 kilowatts of heat energy. Now, to put this into context, your aquarium heater would cost you £2.98 at the current energy rates to run that 24 hours. The air source heat pump would cost you £4.36 to run for 24 hours constantly. But the difference being, you are getting four times the amount of heat energy coming out the other side than you are the heater. So in effect, to produce the same amount of energy, you're gonna need, you would be spending 11 pound 92, just short of 12 quid to get the same amount of heat out. Now as I said, that's comparing the 500 watt heater against it if you just use the wattage. So it uses uh, 0.73 watts, the air source heat pump at that temperature range. Now, if you're again looking at use cases for us in this country, if you are thinking about the winter, this one does operate down to minus seven, according to the instructions, um, which is different to how they've advertised it. But if obviously the figures they're producing are correct, I haven't done any real world testing this, but we will. The 500 watt heater is gonna remain the same. 24 hour period, you're gonna produce 12 kilowatts of energy, use 12 kilowatts of energy, and it's gonna cost you £2.98. At minus seven, air temperature, minus seven, so this is obviously pretty cold, for most of us in the country, unless you're really up north or in the, the highlands, we are going to be using 10.8 kilowatts of energy. And this is at a water temperature of 15 degrees, sorry. 10.8 kilowatt of energy, which will cost us £2.68. And we are still going to be producing 21.6 kilowatts of energy during that same period. Again, because of the efficiency of the air source heat pump versus the heater. So again, to get yourself towards the same produ production of heat energy, you're going to be spending sort of over six pound um, on the aquarium heater versus the two pound sixty-eight for the same time period. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's yeah, it's 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 one of them. Once you sit down and you actually think about it, work it out, and just write it down in front of you, it does make quite good sense. Obviously, what I'm not doing here is taking into account how long the air source heat pump is going to be on versus the aquarium heater. But basically what I'm saying is, is that air source heat pump, say if you only need 12 kilowatts of energy a day, it's going to stop and not be on a lot of the time. Whereas the aquarium heater is going to be on the whole time. So your cost efficiency is going to come out. So you save money, you get more heat. And as far as I'm concerned, that's what this hobby has to be about half the time is finding the best ways to save some money and spend your money. So, right. That's, that's it on that bump. So again, like I said, hope you found it useful um, and let's crack on. All right, so that has joined Fish Corner where I'm stockpiling parts for my new project. Um, and we'll move on to that in the coming weeks and months. And there's a few people who are quite interested in seeing what's going on. Um, but you can see some of my food there. Spoiler alert, that's coming up as well. 
and there's obviously my old IBC QT tank, which is currently completely empty. But I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I just wanted to put that out there because it is still on, th on offer at £300 today. Um, I'll put the link in the description if anyone is interested. Obviously, I haven't tested it yet, so I'm not saying rush out and buy this exact one. What I'm telling you is, is if you're interested in exploring air source heat pumps, this mini one could be a quite a good option. So, as ever, guys, if you've enjoyed that, please give us a like, please give us a subscribe, and until next time, I will catch you then. Take care. Bye-bye.